Good morning, good morning, good morning, Internet. Craig Chamberlain here. This is IT Life talking about, well, what goes on in my life in the world of IT, immersed in the world of IT. Yesterday, we had somebody in our office get infected with the Locky virus. If you guys don't know what the Locky virus is, it's ransomware. What is ransomware, you ask? How nice of you to ask. Ransomware is where these buttholes or cyber terrorists, whatever you want to call them, cyber buttholes, essentially create software that encrypt all of the data on your machine. And then they say, don't worry, we will help you decrypt your software for the small, small price of a half a Bitcoin. Translated to USD, $400. So, essentially, if you decide to pay up, they give you a piece of software that unlocks all of your files. And then, that's it. You support terrorism. Essentially, that's what happens. Now, I can definitely understand people who are in a situation similar to ours who may not have any backups. But the problem with this software is it actually goes out and rewrites network share drives as well. So it's not just the local computer it infects. It'll go out and actually connect to anything that's connected to the network. So essentially, like our company, we may have, I don't know, a job server that has all of our job information on it, or a user server that has a bunch of shared documents between all of our users, or our accounting software, which requires a mapped network drive in order to function. And this virus could go out and rewrite all of that data because it's connected to a single machine. Now, before any of you freak out, this is technically not a virus. I know I called it a virus, but it's technically not. It is a script that is executed when you open a Word document. This Word document was socially engineered. In other words, it was targeted to specific people. The first variant of it we got two weeks ago, and it said it was in the form of a resume. So they got a document that was an attachment on their Microsoft Office that said, <clears throat> you know, here's my resume you requested. You know, and you open it and it, boom, executes the script. Uh, the second variant we got was two weeks later and it was the form of an invoice. So naturally, somebody in invoicing who handles invoicing is, you know, it's muscle memory. You know, you get in the habit of getting mail and you open it. And uh, it's just part of the deal. Now, a couple things to consider is we were able to recover from this without paying the extortion fee, without supporting terrorism, essentially. Uh, because I have a long-standing set of backups for our company and the gentleman who got infected was like no screw them I'll just live with the data that you can recover because I'm not supporting terrorism. So kudos to him, but um uh, essentially We were able to recover I'd say 80 to 90 percent of what was lost um, but If this the, the way the best way to prevent something like this is obviously you know, being aware that attachments have this stuff sometimes. Um, you want to make sure in Microsoft Word or Excel or, or uh, uh, what is it? Uh, not PowerPoint. Uh, it is PowerPoint. Yeah. Yeah. You want to make sure your macro security is enabled and preferably set as close to high as humanly possible for you. Uh, a macro is essentially a script that runs when you open a document. Now that does it's not foolproof of course uh people can write scripts that bypass it but I from what what I understand about this virus is that it will throw up a warning uh our macro security was actually disabled as a result of the accounting software we use it was a recommended setup believe it or not at the time of setup um and of course we had some of the macro security enabled on some of our machines but the users could easily bypass that cuz we don't lock users out of that we only got like 10 users Regardless, other prevention is, of course, make sure you always have backups. If you don't have any form of backup, man, you guys got to do something. Make sure a 3 2 1 backup is the best approach if you can afford it. Uh, essentially, you got three backups. You have two that are local, one that's off site. That's the 3 2 1 backup method. So you have two local backups. In other words, you have like an external hard drive that dumps your critical data off, off onto an external drive. And you may have a mirror drive, which actually mirrors your hard drive as you you know, write data to it, or you may occasionally just burn a disk, you know, to have a periodic local backup. And then you have one offsite backup using a service like Carbonite or Amazon S3. That's all I got for today, guys. 
I'm going to go finish the cleanup. I think we're good to go, but have a great day. I'll talk to you tomorrow.